Hello, hi. Good morning, my dear students. And uh, this is a new chapter we are beginning. That is solution. So successfully we have completed one chapter, and this is the second chapter. And this is also comes in physical chemistry. So let's we will first finish the physical chemistry. We will see based on that if it is some syllabus or cut off points, we will leave that later. Okay. That's why I thought to continue the physical chemistry. So coming to the main point, the solution this chapter carries seven marks. So we don't know whether if the syllabus is changed, the, the distribution of the marks also changes. So that's why we will think of our think of that uh, distribution of marks later but we are very sure about the what is in the syllabus and uh, how they will last what they will last what you have to write how you have to write this is what we uh, must be follow so let's begin solution is nothing but it's a homogeneous mixture where the two components do not react with each other so here solution is nothing but thing that we are having the sugar solution sugar solution here sugar solution means it is containing water plus sugar it is called as sugar solution here the solution is nothing but it is a homogeneous mixture to the water to the water by adding the sugar or salt it is not possible to identify what is there in the water because unless we taste it is not possible means even though after adding the sugar, the water seems to be a water. It's appearing like water. It means if it is appearing like similar, then it's called as homogeneous. Means the mixture is not appearing. It seems to be an initial position only. So such kind of mixture is called as homogeneous mixture. And they are not reacting each other. Means water is not going to react with the sugar. Means it's not going to undergo any chemical reaction. Such kind of non-reactive homogeneous mixtures are called as solutions these are the solution so we oftenly familiar with solutions are nothing but only the liquid water solution salt solution sugar solution tea some vagara whichever we are observing only it doesn't mean that sugars are nothing but not only liquids keep in your mind sugars are nothing but i mean uh, solutions are nothing they are not only the liquids so commonly even we also most of the time we are using such words when the solution is there any solution solution it doesn't mean that only liquid solution it may be in the form of solid it may be in the form of liquid or it may be in the form of gases we will come to know about this differentiation this chapter solution will bring you a very wonderful uh, environment, environment whichever you are already familiar but you will think that oh, it is a different kind of solutions. So this chapter will help you to understand and it is most important. Coming to the next point, the solution is nothing but homogeneous solution which are not reactive each other's and the solution containing minimum it is containing the two components. That's why it is called as binary solution, binary component or it is nothing but binary component. Here binary is nothing but the solution containing two components. If it is containing two components, then it is called as binary. If it is containing more than two, three, four, based on that we are differentiating the compounds or the elements or the molecules present in the solution. If it is two, then it is called as binary. Here, binary solution is nothing but the solution containing two substances or the compounds. Among these two, there are two kind of the uh, compounds. One is Solvent, another one is solute. I hope you are very much familiar about these words because since from high school and you were from first school, you see we have learned about this. So, here solvent and solute. Solvent is nothing but the solution which is containing the major portion of the components called as solvent. The solution is containing very minor components called as solute. Means the solution solvent should be the greater quantity. And solute should be the lesser quantity. Such kind of compounds are called as solvent and solute. And in the solutions, there are actually three types of the solution. So solutions are nothing but they may be of solid or liquid or 
The solution should be in the form of solid. Such kind of compounds are called as solid solution. How means? Mere over, more over we are carrier of this sugar solution. Sugar solution. Can you see here? In this sugar solution, what is the solute? Solute is sugar, and solvent is water. So, if the compound contain Sugar solution, just look here. Solute and solvent. A solid solution is nothing but if the solution containing solid, solid, solvent and solute may either be a solid. Or liquid or yes yes such kind of solution is called as solid solution. Solid solution is nothing but that solution should contain both solute and solvent. But solvent should be the solid and solute may be a solid liquid or yes yes. Same thing here also. The liquid solution is nothing but it should means it is a solution. Solution it if it is a liquid solution the solvent compulsory should be liquid. Solvent should be liquid and solute may be a either solute, liquid, or gases. Such kind of solution is called as liquid solution. Similarly, last one, the gas solution. The gas solution is nothing but the solution which contains the solvent in gaseous form and the solute either in solid or liquid or gases. It means the the solute whichever or in any state it doesn't matter. It may be a solid, it may be a liquid, or it may be a gas. We are giving the preference of solvent. If the solvent is solid state, then it is called as solid solution. If the solvent is liquid, liquid solution. If the solvent is gaseous, it is called as <coughs> gaseous solution. So moreover, in defining the solid, liquid, gas, you are not supposed to neglect this solute. Including this solute status along with the solvent, we have to define the three status that is solid solution, liquid solution, and gaseous solution. Here in this chapter, the first important thing is they never ask you what is solution and all, but you should remember what is solution, what is binary, and uh, types of the solution, what is solvent and solute. <coughs> the first important portion arises in this chapter is. Along with the definition of solid, liquid, gas solution, the most important is example. Definitely, they will ask in the example. Write the uh, definition of gas, gas solution and give example. Give the example for liquid solution. Like that, they will ask you. The example is most important in this chapter. Look here. Here, there are an uh, example for solid solution, liquid solution, and gaseous solution. Can you see here? First one is solid solution, second one is liquid solution, third one is gas solution. This is the most important, definitely for two or at least one marks. So, how do you ask things? They are not directly asking you the example for solid solution. There are a different kind of question will arise. How means? So, solid solution is nothing but the solvent should be solid. You should remember this one. The liquid solution is nothing but solvent should be a liquid only. So gas solution is nothing but they are having the solvent in gaseous form. But each of the solid liquid gas are having the different solutes. Different solutes. So based on that they will arise the question. So look here. Solid solution is if it is containing the solutes, I have given the different form. If the solute is solid and the solvent is also solid. Then it is example for solid, solid solution and the solid solution is also contained in the solute in the liquid state and the solvent solute in the gaseous state. So based on that, 
they will be asking the example so they will ask you the question in such a way that give the example for the solid solution which contain the solute in the solid state and solid in the solvent state so here copper is present in a gold a means gold copper in a gold so copper is also solid and gold is also solid so solute solid is present in a solid state and also in the solvent state so here mercury is being a liquid and it is dissolved in a sodium where sodium is a solid so here in the last one in the solid solution the palladium is a solid it is a solvent the palladium is dissolved and it is contained in the hydrogen so hydrogen is mixed or dissolved in a solid called palladium therefore this is the example for the solid solution which contain the gaseous solute and solid solvent are you getting this point so the question is not only arises on the basis of giving the example for liquid solution they will ask you in the liquid solution the solvent is always liquid only but the solute varies it may be a solute it could be gas so based on that you should remember here glucose dissolved in water so glucose is a solid water is a liquid therefore in the liquid solution solid is a solid similarly ethanol dissolved in a water so ethanol is a liquid liquid dissolved in a liquid that is it is liquid solution oxygen is dissolved in a water oxygen is a gaseous compound gaseous solute gaseous solute dissolved in a liquid solvent this is the example oxygen dissolved in a water similarly one more thing in a gaseous solution the solvent is always gas only gaseous solution if the solute is solid means camphor in a nitrogen camphor is nothing but carbon nam carbon ke liye kehte camphor hai so camphor in a oxygen so it is possible to store the camphor in a nitrogen gas so we are observing the nitrogen that nitrogen is dissolves the camphor so it means the appearing of the solution is gaseous form it is gaseous form but the dissolves the solid compound but it dissolves the solid compound therefore give the example for the solid solute and gaseous solvent the last two such questions give the example for the solid solute and gaseous solvent the gaseous solvent is nothing but here nitrogen and solid solid is nothing but camphor therefore solid camphor is dissolved in a nitrogen therefore this is the example for solid solute and gaseous solvent i hope you are getting this clear and still you are getting means no doubt once or twice you just analyze yourself here there is no attempt to remember but you have to buy at this one because by seeing this one you can able to understand but what example you have to give it's most important so therefore next one is in the gaseous the nitrogen same thing here it is in the gaseous state chloroform is a liquid ch cl3 ch cl3 is called as chloroform chloroform being a liquid it is dissolved in a gaseous compound gases is dissolves the liquid compound therefore the solution is seems to be in a gaseous form it appear in the gaseous form the gaseous nitrogen dissolves the chloroform such kind of solution chloroform in a nitrogen this solution is example for the gaseous solution which contain in the liquid solute and gaseous solvent are you getting this point so similarly the last one is the gaseous solution which contain the gaseous solute and gaseous solvent the example is the mixture of oxygen and nitrogen here oxygen is going to dissolve in a nitrogen so it means oxygen is also gaseous compound nitrogen is also gaseous compound so i hope this is very clear in this chapter the first one the important portion you have to concentrate is this example this example is most important so it will be asked in their own choice sometimes they last you the hydrogen is dissolved in the palladium so write the solute and solvent present in the solution and in the solution they will give you such kind of the question so therefore this is important and next one is expressing the concentration of solution expressing the 
concentration of solution. So here concentration of solution is nothing but so we are right now we are familiar about the solution. So solution is nothing but it's a binary compound means it's contained into one solute and solvent. It doesn't mean that the solute should be one. The solute may be one or two. Means to the water we can't add only sugar. We may add sugar, salt, and some other things also. But solvent should be one in that manner. Here, uh, expressing the concentration of solution. Expressing the concentration. What is that concentration? Here, concentration is nothing but if if somebody asked you in your home to prepare a strong tea, they are feeling that day. The strong tea is nothing but you have to prepare the tea in a normal way only. You have to put the water, milk, tea powder and sugar. But concentrated strong is nothing but that will become the strong when you put a little more uh, tea powder, sugar and little more uh, uh, what's that, milk extra. So keeping this little more excess at the time, that tea becomes stronger. That stronger is nothing but what? To the solvent, to the solvent, if the solute compound, if the solute compound increases, increases, then it becomes the stronger or concentrated solution. Look here, a solution forms by the mixing of solute and solvent, solute and solvent, therefore it becomes the solution, it becomes solution. Solute and solvent together it forms the solution. As the quantity of solute increases, as the quantity of solute increases in a solvent, the solution becomes concentrated, strong, it capacity increases. Capacity means the quantity of the solute defines the solution's concentration. Concentration is nothing but whether it's strong or weak, not in the form of reactivity, in the form of capacity of solute present in the solution. So based on that, first thing we are expressing the concentration of the solution. There are different kinds or the terms are there to define the concentration of solution. The first one is molarity. First one is molarity. So molarity is nothing but, I hope this is very familiar for you in the last previous classes also. So here, Molarity is nothing but number of moles of number of moles of solute number of moles of solute to volume of the solution in liter to volume of solution in liter. It's very important, very basic and fundamental concept in the physical chemistry. So look here, volatility is nothing but it's a ratio of Number of moles of solute, how much solute compounds are present comparing with the total volume of the solution. Can you see the solution, not the solvent? Sol solution is nothing but together solute and solvent. Overall in the solution, overall in the solution means volume of the solution, particularly in liquid, not in kg. Particularly in liquid, you have to remember this one, even most of you get confused. Here, volume of the solution in the liquid we are taking in the liquid is called as molarity is called as molarity the same thing it will be uh, defined in the different concept that is second one is molarity both are nothing but confusion molarity molarity is nothing but number of moles of solute divided by volume of the solution in liter whereas molarity is nothing but same thing number of moles of solute number of moles of solute to here volume of the solution we are taking but here we are taking that mass of the solvent we are taking only the mass of the solvent um, yes exactly it is defined mass of the solvent yes mass of the solvent in kg is in kg. So it means molarity is nothing but number of moles of solute in a overall solution which is taken in a liter. liter. Whereas molarity is nothing but is defined as the ratio of number of moles of solute to 
mass of the solvent in kg. Here we are considering the solvent in kg, means it should be in a solid form. In kg, solvent in the form of kg. Here we are taking the whole solution in liquid form. These are the two different definitions. Uh, they will not ask you in your second PhD, but it is a fundamental, very basic concepts. So as we do that in the mathematics, they never ask you write the tables of 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3. They never ask you, but it is fundamental. Similarly, here also, polarity, polarity, they will not ask you the definition, but it will help you somewhere. Based on that, we are moving still more uh, definitions and all. Therefore, you should remember what is molarity and molarity. And next third one is mole fraction. So here mole fraction is nothing but to the point of your examination I will tell you which is important, what you have to remember. If I am not concentrating means it's understood. So it will never come in the exams. So whatever for your knowledge purpose, you should remember everything. Mole fraction. So mole fraction is nothing but what? Think that it is A and B is to other reactor and we get in the product. So if we want to calculate the mole fraction, so mole fraction of the compound is nothing but it can be calculated on the basis of number of moles of a solute, whichever we are calculating, number of moles of the compound to the total number of moles of the all solutions. What I am telling is mole fraction is nothing but if I want to calculate the mole fraction of XA, X is nothing but mole fraction of component A, A and B are the reactor. Mole fraction of component A can be calculated as then A divided by mole fraction of that component to the total number of mole fraction of the all component. If the reactants are two means we have to write the overall two. Reactants number of moles and this is the number of moles of a component A and this is divided by number of moles of all the remaining component means all the not only excluding not A including all A and B. If it is A B C three reactants are there means you have to write A B C then A plus N B plus N C like that. If you want if you want to calculate the mole fraction of component B that is X B is equal to which one you want to calculate the mole fraction that one you have to write. N B is equal to and remain below as it is sum of all the mole fraction component. So this is also important for the definition purpose generally for your understanding. Mole fraction is defined as uh, the ratio of number of moles of duct component means which one we are calculated. Mole fraction is defined as the number of moles of duct component to the total number of moles of in the solution is called as mole fraction. Here, mole fraction we are calculating on the basis of uh, number of moles. Here is the thing number of moles. Number of moles can be calculated based on the uh, molecular mass and molar mass. What is molecular mass? What is molar mass? You will come to know about these two in the next tomorrow classes. So, these three are the most important and next of this one is mass percentage, volume percentage and PPM are there but it is exceptional according to the blueprint. So I will be giving you the formula, you just write that formula in your notes and you should be familiar. So tomorrow we will continue this concepts with uh, very interesting. I would like to remind you one thing, if you drop to see the videos you never able to understand the further concept. So compared to the other chapters, it is continue with concepts. If you are not attended the previous, not observe the first video or second video, if you move directly fifth or fourth video, it's not possible. You never get a continuity, you can't understand the thing. So this is how the physical chemistry in this chapter continues. So therefore I request you, please observe the video continuously, then only you can able to understand. And most of you have not given the notes and not given the assignments. Those who will give the notes and assignments, only for them I am going to send the notes. Keep in your mind. So I will be waiting for your notes and assignments. Okay. And we will meet on the tomorrow classes with the continuation of solutions. Until have a nice day.